Hello, Concrete Maniacs. We're to the third video in the ACI 211 mixture procedure design. Yeah. And in this one, we're going to be learning how to determine the amount of coarse aggregate, fine aggregate, and then how to trial batch. Yep, we're going to close this puppy out. Don't worry. This will all become more clear once we do an example problem together. And that will be in a future video. Coarse aggregate is the material with the largest volume in a concrete mixture, typically. So it's pretty important to get right. An ACI is going to estimate the volume of coarse aggregate by measuring how well the rock packs in a bucket. Yeah. And then they're also going to measure the finest modulus of the sand. And they're going to combine them together this concept developed by Goldbeck and Gray in 1942. This whole idea is called the B over B naught. First, Goldbeck and Gray took coarse aggregate. They oven dried them. We're not going to use oven dry in the real procedure. ACI actually makes a correction factor for this or a modification then from what Goldbeck and Gray did originally but they used oven dry aggregate and then they're going to pack them. How do they do that? Well, they put them in a container and they like rot them, uh, beat on them, boof, 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 beat them down in that container, right? Of the known volume. And this idea is this is the closest spacing that the rocks can ever possibly have. And this density is going to be known as B naught. But in a concrete mixture, this is unrealistic. One needs to separate the particles by the mortar, right? Like I said before, the particles are floating in the mortar. To do this, you have to decrease the density or like take some rocks out to an ideal density of B. If this doesn't make any sense, this is what they measured, this dry rotted unit weight, beat all the rocks in, and then this ideal density is these rocks separated apart at some distance B. This is where this B divided by B naught concept comes from. Maybe this will make more sense in a little bit. So Goldbreck and Gray started by using one aggregate and using one sand and investigating what this magical spacing was, what they thought was the best for the concrete. And then they started to tweak it. They started to say, if you're going to have a finer sand, that's a higher FM, a higher fineness modulus, that you can actually fit more coarse aggregate in the container in this mythical spacing. Think about these. These finer, very small f sand particles will be easier to move around so those you can get more coarse aggregates in there. But if you have a coarse sand, imagine just some larger particles inside your sand. It's going to be harder to get those coarse aggregates in there. You're not going to be able to get as much. This is with a lower finest modulus. So this, again, is what they found, and they quantified it with this concept called B over B naught. Some people don't like this whole, whole approach, and they just pick a number, like 0 0.60 or 0 0.65. However, ACI gives you a chart, or actually, they don't give you a chart at all. They give you a table, and Dr. Hover has turned this table into a chart. God bless Ken Hover. And it looks something like this. Here's your nominal maximum coarse aggregate size down here. Okay. The finest moduluses of your sands are up here, and you can interpolate between these two lines if you need to. And based on your maximum nominal aggregate size and your finest modulus, you come over and you pick your B, B over B naught value. Again, this is this concept that Goldbrack and Gray came up with. This kind of like ideal spacing versus the actual unit weight of the material all packed in as tightly as they can inside a container. This is going to become useful in just a second. So after finding this mythical B over B naught, after finding this mythical spacing 
based on what they think your maximum normal aggregate size is, that's kind of an insight to what your gradation is, what they think your gradation is. And then based on your fineness modulus, that's how coarse or how fine your sand is and how they think all that's going to pack together. You get this mythical B over B naught. And you're going to multiply that by the SSD rotted weight of the coarse aggregate in your mixture. So let's get this straight. This is the ideal, okay? They've worked it out for all kinds of different scenarios. And then you multiply this by your B naught, by your B naught for your materials, and you're going to get B, this spacing. I know. Crazy, right? Simply, you do this. You take the B over B naught from the table I just told you about. You multiply it by the SSD rotted unit weight. That's the saturated surface dry of your aggregate in your concrete mixture. You're going to multiply that. That number's like about 100, 100 pounds per cubic foot typically. You're going to multiply that by 27 cubic feet, and that's going to give you the total amount of coarse aggregate that you'll use in pounds. Finally, the last thing you design in an ACI 211, the last material you come up with is the fine aggregate. This is the remaining volume of the material in the mixture. They make it up with sand. So you find this by doing simple math. You basically take the total volume and you subtract the water, the binder, the air, and the coarse aggregate volumes. It just looks like this. 27 cubic feet minus the volume of water, the volume of the binder, the volume of the air, minus the volume of the coarse aggregate. That gives you the remainder left over volume of the sand. Now, in they, they, they use this concept as they say that they've already taken into account the gradation of the sand in the B over B naught calculation. So whatever's left has to be sand. But it's not quite that easy because... If your water content goes up or your paste content or your air content goes up, what ends up going down is your sand volume. We'll talk more about that coming up. But this is the idea. The final step in the ACI 211 process is a very important one. All this other stuff that we've been talking about, all these calculations are just like a first guess. You actually have to see if it works. You actually have to put the concrete mixture together. You have to make it, and you have to see if it works. And you do that in a trial batch. So as I say here, 211 is just a first guess. To see if your proportions are going to be in the right ballpark or not, you have to actually make the concrete. So when you're trial batching, you need to adjust the water and admixtures to produce the desired slump. Also, you should check the air content, the finishability, the response to vibration, the pumpability, or whatever else unique property you might need your concrete to do. You're also going to have to check the strength or maybe the durability. And these adjustments need to be made depending on a lot of factors. And it also helps a lot to know your materials really, really well to begin with, to try different material combinations to, to find a successful mix. In some ways, ACI 211 can be extremely frustrating. It gets you in the ballpark sometimes, but you still have to tweak it from there. And this is probably a good lead into my next video, where I'm going to talk about the limitations of ACI 211.